Right, I'm gonna put my brushes down. I'm gonna take a break and head on over to the Forest of Dean. I need to catch up with my friend Lizzie, otherwise known as Drop the Weasel. She's got some exciting news about being picked up by um, a shopping channel. So she's had her screen tests and she's been filmed and the products and craft kits that she makes are gonna be presented on this particular channel. I think this coming Saturday. So um, I'm gonna go over, we're gonna have a quick chat about that because that's really exciting for her. But also she's very kindly said that I could film while I'm there and I'm particularly interested in her studio setup because studio space is so important, whether it's your kitchen table, the corner of the spare room, underneath the stairs, a shed in the garden or a purpose-built studio, it doesn't matter what it is, the space to create is important. And because what you do in that space is the process of taking something from quite a vulnerable idea to something that's a tangible product that needs distribution. And I think the process from idea to distribution is fascinating. And it's something that goes on behind the scenes and we very often don't see much of that. So I'm going to chat to Liz about what it takes to make her process work and how long it took her to sort of get it to the point where you know it really works well for her as well and I thought you would like to see that too. Anyway, um, paintbrush down, jacket on, jump in the car and let's head to the Forest of Dean. workroom that used to be my studio. It's now the room where I do my packing, where I do my computer work. I've got my printers here as well. I've got the large printer and the office printer. Um, and it's at the moment it's very chock-a-block because I'm working on a large order. So I've got all the boxes on the shelves and all the hoops for the embroidery kits. So yeah this is kind of like the nuts and bolts of the business really in this room. And then my studio at the garden as well. into my studio. This is the Drop the Weasel head quarters. Um, so come and have a look. Right, so this is my studio uh, and I absolutely love this space. It's a really lovely space to work. The space in the house is a little bit cluttered and that's where the nuts and bolts happen of the business. But this is my creative space. So I've got my table, which is where I design, and it faces over the garden so I can watch the birds and um, just have a nice afternoon of creativity. I also bring my laptop up onto this table as well. Um, I've then got my felt storage area. As you can see, it's in rainbow colors. <laughs> I've also got my sample rack. So when I make new samples for the kits, they go up on the rack. Um, this table in the center is where I do my cutting of the felt and all the fabrics that I use. It also doubles as my photographic table so when I'm doing photography I'll move it to this wall at the back and I'll remove these and set it up as a photographic table and then I've got my lights and my photographic equipment stashed in there, hidden away. Um, I've got my shelves which have got my reference books some paints, um, magazines, things like that. As well as doing kits, I also paint, I also do um, stamping, you know, wooden stamps. I also do screen printing. So it's it's a place where I keep all my art, art equipment. The art on the wall is the art that I've created and had it made into canvases. I've got my canvas storage area, which is here. And I've also got my paper storage chest. This is an old post office chest, which I absolutely love, and it's got the, the hooks there where they used to put the rods through. Um, so I really love that, and it's a great color, it fits well in here. Um, I really wanted to build a place that was light and airy, so I've got windows in the ceiling and a great big picture window. Um, and it's just a nice area to work. I've also got my planning area. So this is where 
I plan out my 90 days, my kit creation. So when I'm starting a new collection, I'll write the title, the date of launch and the collection story. And then I'll log each piece. Um, so I've also got what's important this month, what's important this week, what I need to remember, and then my 90 days planner. Um, and with every collection, I will create a mood board, which goes there, and that changes with each collection. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> <Your> mum. <laughs> yeah. I'm on telly. <laughs> We've known each other for a few years now, and it's funny, isn't it? Like every couple of years, we sort of go, "Fancy catch up," <laughs> yeah. and it's um, it's really nice to see how each other's businesses have grown and yeah. changed over the years. And I can see with your business, it's changed from the illustration, and now you've got something very exciting on the go. Yeah. Tell us about yeah. that. Well, um, so I started this. Um, journey and I took redundancy, started painting thinking that that's what I wanted to do because I'd been sitting in a factory for 15 years planning it and I thought that's really what I wanted to do but the reality was that once I'd started doing it, it wasn't actually what I wanted to do and I was following your social media and I was following your journey through um, just getting it all out there and I thought that's really inspiring and I thought that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> Um, but then last Christmas, I got to a point where I really felt it was dragging me down almost because it was kind of out of control. There were yeah. too many aspects of it that one person on their own couldn't control. Yeah. And so uh, I started hand sewing over Christmas and it was literally like a light bulb moment. You know, that flash of, oh, this is what I need to be doing. And so um, I was stitching things like this little um, pin cushion. And were you doing that just out of... I want to chill over Christmas. Yeah. For me, I want to absolutely. Sew. Yeah, absolutely. It was purely a relaxation, right? Leave the business for a minute. It's not going where you want it to go, but let's just do this. And in that moment, it was, oh, oh God, this is it. So I then, over Christmas, I started creating this design, which is the potting shed. Yeah. It's, um, a little lavender bag. Yeah. And um, that one was the one that kicked it all off. I designed it in a week, I had it designed and I started writing the instructions and then I had to go through doing Adobe Illustrator and teaching myself how to do all the and design. And you didn't know how to do that? I'd done um, a colouring book that was on Amazon yeah. and I'd done that but that was bare basics yeah. and I just, I didn't really know what I was doing on that but I got that out there but this was more in depth, it was like I really need to get the design Nailed. Nailed, yeah. yeah, and get that sorted. Yeah. So I set about getting on the computer and sorting it out. And it happened really quickly. So this year I've got, I don't know, 18 maybe. Yeah. 18? I've got 18 kits that have been finished. So those 18 kits have been designed throughout this year, since yeah. last Christmas. Yeah, since last Christmas, yeah. yeah. And uh, and then I've started doing embroidery hoops as well. Yeah. Um, and it's all just fallen into place. It's amazing how it's kind of happened. And then I'm now due to go onto a shopping channel to sell them, which is super exciting. I know it's terrifying, but it's the way forward. Yeah. You know, whereas yeah. before with the art, I couldn't see how I was going to take it forward. I think the thing with art is the problem is distribution, isn't yeah. it? Trying yeah. to get it into shops or you yourself with your art at exhibitions or shows or markets. And it's a physically taxing thing mm -hmm. as well as creating the product. Yeah. So what you've done is kind of still kept your creativity but scaled it right down, yeah. made it super accessible yeah. and then looked at the distribution. Yeah. Very clever. And the thing with it all is that I found is I never had a system. Yes. I had no systems in place for this artwork yeah. that I was doing and the lampshades and things. Whereas this, everything goes in the same box, everything has the same cover, it just changes colour, it's got the same templates. Yeah. I've got my cutting sheets that I've created for the felt so I know exactly how much felt goes into each one and it's just it's kind of just all fallen into place yeah and that in itself is a revelation for me yeah and it just makes me so happy that I can see where I can you've got it. a real spark yeah yeah, yeah. It. it's not been there for a while but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's never like, oh I know what I'm doing <laughs> so that in itself I would encourage everybody to look at what they're doing and saying have I got a system yeah and it sounds quite boring having systems yeah no I totally but, know what you mean yeah. because 
You even need a system in how you set your studio up, don't you? Yeah. So you gave us a little tour of um, what's going on in here and also what's going on down at the room in the house. And I call it the wet and dry side. Yeah. As in, I've got the, the wet space where I paint and create, and then I've got the dry side, which is all of the admin and all of the emails, but all of the important stuff yeah. which help make your business work. So talk us through your studio setup because when we very first met, mm -hmm. you didn't have this, did yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so like I said earlier, I took redundancy from the job. They they offered redundancy. I was at a point where I'd been working for years trying to pay my mortgage off super fast, and I'd done that. And then the next phase was to buy two flats in Bristol, so I did that. So I needed some income because I knew that when I was going to go for the art thing, mm -hmm. I needed something in the background to help me because mm -hmm. I'm on my own. Yeah. So I've got no other income. Um, so I bought two flats in Bristol, and then I was on this this next phase where I was trying to save up some money and it was £25,000 I was going for and I thought if I can get that then I can go for it and I'll build a little studio and I thought a little shed would be nice you know something like that and then I was saving and about probably a month later my employer said right we want voluntary redundancies and I was at the back of the room I'll go I'll go and they kept saying yeah. and they were saying think about it it's a big decision and I was thinking I've been thinking about it for 10 years I'm like yeah where do I sign you know couldn't get out fast enough and then, um, so I had this pot of money and I thought, right, okay, I'm going to invest it. And I thought if I built something solid, yeah. even if I move house, it's an investment, you know, it's, it's an asset, asset isn't yeah. it, you know? So um, I thought, right, the top of the garden, perfect. Yeah. Um, and the builders kept saying, it is going to be big. And I said, yeah, I want it big. But yeah, it is going to be big. And I was like, yeah, but I want it big. But the truth is, it can never be big enough. <laughs> <Exactly. Yeah. laughs> it's in the rubbish I've got to put in it. So um, I wanted the ceilings to have windows. Yeah. I wanted it to be as light and airy because my home is very dark. Well, it's, it's a like, little yeah. cottage, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. so I wanted it to be total opposite. Yeah. Um, so we set about building it and it is literally a box, yeah. but it is quite versatile, you know, yeah. because you can move the shelves around and sort of section it off and make little rooms. Yes. Um, you've got your cosy area where you can sit and have a cup of tea yeah. and just chill. Yeah, yeah. So I've made it kind of like little zones yeah. in room. Yeah. Um, and it does that, um, talking of systems and zones, how does that go together? Uh, do, do you sort of... Um, do you have to reset this room when you're working on a particular thing? Or is this pretty much set up to do everything you do now? Yeah, this will be set up for probably about six months and then yeah. I'll have a little shuffle around. Those shelves, yeah. in every position they can possibly be. <laughs> <laughs> they've been doubled up, they've been made to look like a little screen. I think um, every studio in this land has a set of Ikea shelves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that trolley. Yeah, yeah. yeah that trolley too. Yeah. I see it in every Instagram picture yeah. of everybody's studio. Yeah. Oh, they've got a black one. Yeah. I'll have to go and get another one. So yeah, it does it does morph. Um, like I say, this table will go to that wall when I'm taking photographs. Yeah. Because that wall's pretty good. So yeah. the lights and everything. Yeah. Um, and then the photo, the table collapses. I've also had a pop-up shop in this studio. Yes, you have. So, yeah, yeah, that was nice. And I've an open studio event. Yeah. Um, it's nice to have people visit. You know, yeah. They also come but it's nice also not to have to be in a shop all the time as well, yeah. you know. So when you're ready with your stock and you've got that good energy to be front stage, yeah. on the yeah. stage I should say, um, you can say you've got an open studio. Yeah. 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 And then when you need to be backstage when you've got to be producing, knuckling down on commissions, whatever, mm. um, is your sort of creative output, you can shut the door and, yeah. you know, public don't enter then. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. And to be able to just leave everything out is amazing as well. Mm. You know when you're working from the kitchen table, which is where we all start, isn't Definitely. it? And you have to keep putting it away because oh, you've got to get the tea ready. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it kind of stifles your flow of creativity as well, doesn't it? Yeah, you don't um, want to make a mess again, yeah, do you? Yeah, because you know you've got to tidy yeah, it up. Yeah. yeah, so this is a dream read. Yeah. And I know I'm so lucky to have it. You know, yeah. I don't take it for granted. But there was a um, whole... Um, it was a whole growth period of getting mm. to that point, or yeah. this point, I should say, yeah. of where you were working in the house at the kitchen table. Yeah. And so I think we, as you say, we yeah. all start there, yeah. and we've got to be grateful for starting there and having the dream mm. to build something better for our creativity. Yeah. 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 There's those natural steps on there. What would you say are your top three tips for setting up the studio? I would say um, think about how you want to work in your studio. What do you want to do in that studio? Um, for me, I didn't want it cluttered. I wanted it light and airy. 
it's a total contrast from my house, you know. Um, so that was one of my priorities. But have your workflow, think about what you do, think about your areas and what you need to do in it. So is it photography? Is it cutting fabric? Is it painting? Um, and think about how you're gonna work that. Uh, also think about, for me, I thought, how could I make it work beyond that? So pop-up shops, open studios, have you got access to the public? Mm -hmm. um, would you be happy to have people traipsing through your house to come to your studio and things like that? So all those things are quite important. Yeah. But I think overall it needs to be the feel of the studio because if you don't like the area, you're not going to go in there, you're not going to work in there and I think that's fundamental, yeah. so I would say that. Ah, oh, brilliant tips, thank you.